Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two in my Peaceful Lake series and in this video we're going to go ahead and add the final details to the painting and make the water look more realistic. So if you want to follow along traditionally check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the brushes and the paint and the canvas that I use. Um, the app that I'm using is Infinite Painter for Android and I like to use this app because it has realistic brush textures in it. So here we want to go ahead and continue to kind of smudge out the the ripples that I've got in the bottom and we just kind of want to make it look uh, more realistic in the water just kind of add a little bit more of some lines there and here I'm trying to get the uh, line real thin and what I want to do here is to um, make the the boat the little boat and it's just a silhouette it's not going to be any big detail here but you can tell that it's a fisherman sitting in a boat and he has a fishing pole so we want to kind of just go ahead and make a little silhouette you can use a dark gray color if you're following along traditionally just add burnt sienna and ultramarine blue with a touch of white acrylic gesso and make a grayish look and so here I'm just kind of trying to get the silhouette of a fisherman and his boat we don't want any big details and <clears throat> I just want to try to get the silhouette of a fishing line too you can kind of see um, the fishing line hanging off the end of the boat so I'm using the um, straight line tool an infinite painter and if you're following along traditionally try to have this uh, I mean yeah if you're following along traditionally and you mess up you're just gonna have to kind of go back in with some of the paint of the mountain and the the sky color <clears throat> but um, if you're doing this digitally put it on a separate layer so that you can erase it out and work on the shape and also if you're following along with acrylic you might be able to just get some water and wipe it off and start over again um, so here we, I am just trying to add a little bit of some shadow under the boat and I'm using same color <clears throat> as the boat and then I want to go ahead and add a little trail like th um, that the boat would make as it was going through the water all the little ripples that it would make so I'm using the the darker blue color for that and just kind of making sort of um, zigzaggy shapes kind of not a total straight line just kind of um, oh, uh, banana shaped lines you, you don't want it to be completely straight because uh, the the ripples as they get further away from the boat will spread out so that's what I'm working on just trying to get a, a little bit of the look of the boat and then I wanted to add a little bit more of the orange color back into the water <clears throat> around the fisherman and around the edges of the mountains and so um, with infinite painter I'm using a, a spray brush but you can use uh, a dry brush technique if you're following along traditionally with just um, a little bit of paint and then smudge it out with your finger and a paper towel and I just wanted to add a little bit more of color back in the water now the colors in the water are going to be more faded than they are in the sky it's, it's going to give it a they'll give it a more uh, watery look if you fade your colors out because we're looking at a distant reflection so we want to go ahead and just kind of um, make the colors not quite as intense and one way you can do that you can actually uh, run a glaze of white acrylic gesso just a very uh, thin glaze if you're following along traditionally or you can just kind of um, smudge it out and fade it out if you're uh, using infinite painter 
And so here I'm just kind of working on the boat again and adding a little bit more color to the water. And I want to add a little bit of some white on top of the ripples. Uh, it's not really white, but light orange on top of the ripples that the boat makes. And you want to have the dark ripples and you want to have the light ripples. And that just gives it more form to the to the ripples on the lake and, and just gives it more of a a watery look and so then i'm zooming out and just wanted to to get a look at the boat and then i want to work on the boat a little bit more i got it too smudged i got the person too smudged so i wanted to kind of make it a little bit more of a detailed silhouette so i'm working on it and the fishing line's pretty good, but I was working on the person and the boat. And I've zoomed in here so I can kind of get some more detail just to see how it, how it looks um, in my reference photo. And I'm leaving the boat reflection more smudged, but I'm sort of making the actual silhouette a little bit uh, more refined and a little bit clearer. And so I just wanted to kind of uh, refine that just a little bit better. And again, we don't want any big detail because we're looking at a, a far, uh, we're way far away from the boat and the mountains and things. It's just a, a really uh, long distance view. And so I'm just kind of working on that, uh, smudging out the, uh, the ripples once more just trying to get kind of a a smoother look to the lake and here i'm just stepping back and seeing what it looks like uh, metaphorically speaking stepping back if you're falling along traditionally actually step back about six feet and see what your painting looks like um, if you're doing this digitally you can just shrink it down and uh, that gives you kind of an idea of distance. Then I wanted to add a little bit more of some darker ripples in the front. Just to give that sort of the the water look there in the corner. Because that's going to be a little bit closer to you. So there's going to be a little bit more form to the ripples. And then I want to go ahead and smudge them out though. I don't want them to be um, real detailed. But we do want kind of. Uh, to be able to see the ripples more close in the front, in the foreground. And here I'm just kind of um, looking at the boat, making sure I get the shape right, <clears throat> and adding a little bit more to the ripples, zooming out and zooming in, just trying to, to see um, what it looks like. And then I thought I'd add a few little birds. So... I took a very thin line, and you can use your script brush if you're following along traditionally, and dark gray color, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and some white, and just make some thin little sort of sort of W or M shapes, kind of M shapes. We don't want the wings to curl down real big. We want them to kind of um, stretch out, but you want uh, just some distant seagull. Uh, look and that's kind of the way seagulls look when you see them uh, a silhouette of them over the water and of course maybe they're following the fisherman and they want to try to catch his fish or something that's what seagulls like to do and so I just went ahead and added that and then I'm gonna do my signature and and just call it done and um, there you have a picture of a very still lake and um, you just do it fairly easy just add what's above in the sky and add it into the water and that makes a really nice little um, water picture and still lakes are fairly easy if you uh, you do distant uh, paintings and of course I wanted to add a little bit of reflection of the birds just tiny bit into the water but you probably won't see much but anyway so there you have it it's um this is how to do a quick little lake painting 
So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. If you want to see what I'm going to do next, then hit the subscribe button. And I will catch you later.